Super Mario. The most popular video game franchise in the world has had its 35th anniversary this year. The original Super Mario Brothers came out in 1985 on the Nintendo Entertainment System while having different sequels and spin-offs on the consoles to come later down the line. To celebrate the milestone, Nintendo released new merchandise such as new Lego sets, a new Game & Watch system, a new free-to-play battle royale game that they totally didn't rip off of a fan-made game that got taken down, a new Levi's collection, Puma shoes that sold out in minutes, and pin sets that sold out in, well, even less than a few minutes as well. But one more notable thing that Nintendo released was a collection of not two, not four, but three of the most popular video games in a 3D platformer genre. And in today's episode of Honest Reviews, where I give my honest opinions on video games, movies, music, and products, I will be reviewing Super Mario 3D All-Stars for the Nintendo Switch. These reviews won't actually cover the games themselves, but it will cover any alterations done to them, like any sort of upscaling or control alterations. Make sure to grab your star bits and refill your flood and get ready to launch up in this brand new episode of Honest Reviews. So right off the bat, when we insert our new game, we're greeted to this home icon of various Mario renders, each looking slightly more and more out of date each time you look to the left. But come on, a small picture on a console's home screen doesn't represent a whole game, now does it? Let's see what this has to bring to the table. As you can see, we're already hovering the first game in the 3D Mario trilogy, Super Mario 64. When we scroll more to the right, we also get to see the second third dimensional Mario game, Super Mario Sunshine, along with the last and personal favorite, Super Mario Galaxy. The bundle also comes with full soundtracks of each included game. But my question is, will people really be walking around in public wearing a pair of headphones with their system in their hands, bag, or pocket? Pretty weird as to why they would even include them in this package when they could have released them officially on streaming platforms like Spotify or Pandora. Or, you know, they could have included Mario Galaxy 2. Well, whatever, it's not like I'll be listening to the soundtrack anyways, let alone any video game music by itself. Anyways, let's go and launch up Super Mario 64, upscaled for the new generation of Nintendo consoles. Right off the bat, we get to see the iconic me. screen, along with the updated start button on the bottom left corner. Once we select the save file and load into the game, we finally get to see the game in its full 1080p glory. Super Mario 64 begins with a letter from Princess Peach inviting Mario to come to her castle for a cake she has baked for him. When he arrives, Mario discovers that Bowser has invaded the castle and imprisoned the princess and her servants within it using the power of the castle's 120 power stars. Many of the castle's paintings are portals to other worlds in which Bowser's minions keep watch over the stars. Mario explores the castle for these portals to enter the world and recover the stars. He gains access to more rooms as he recovers more power stars and eventually traverses three different obstacle courses, each leading to its own battle with Bowser. Defeating Bowser the first two times earns Mario a key for opening another level of the castle. After Mario defeats Bowser in the final battle, Peach is released from the stained glass window above the castle's entrance. Peach rewards Mario by kissing him on the nose and baking the cake that she had promised him. I've never actually fully played Mario 64 before this, so I've been waiting for an HD treatment like this so I could play it for the first time. Yes, I know about Super Mario 64 DS, but well, the D-pad is just really a game breaker for me. Even with the 3DS circle pad, it still feels out of place, and so, you know, I'm kind of glad we got this. But the thing I absolutely have a problem with is the aspect ratio. Come on, it's 2020 and a multi-million dollar company with educated coders can't port a 21-year-old game into full screen and not just a damn square. Even homebrewers were able to do this and that even got taken down by Nintendo. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Yes, I know this game is very controversial with people talking about wanting a whole Crash Bandicoot and Spyro treatment on it with new models, textures, music, etc. But come on, you could have at least done that to make the game a bit more playable and actually see where you're going. In my honest opinion, I'm okay with this mostly because it lets you replay the game with very crisp resolution and is overall mostly great for me. Like I mentioned earlier, this is my first time playing the game. Yeah, I know there's like billions of other consoles to play it on, but they all have their own flaws. I don't have an N64 to play it on right now, the DS has clunky controls, and the Wii U has that ugly virtual console filter that really doesn't want to make me play it. And emulators? 
no. No, I do not want to play on any sort of touchscreen controls or low frames or on any other hardware that isn't a console. This port of Super Mario 64 solves all those problems with my picky ass, so in my opinion, this port is a 7 out of 10. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go over the second game in this collection, Super Mario Sunshine. Just like Super Mario 64, I have never played the game in its entirety, let alone have finished the first level, so my views on this may or may not be different than yours. Upon the first launch, we have the opening scene that starts the story off. Basically, the game takes place on the tropical Isle de Fino, where Mario, Toadsworth, Princess Peach, and five other Toads are taking a vacation. A villain resembling Mario, known as Shadow Mario vandalizes the island with graffiti and leaves Mario to be wrongfully convicted for the mess. Mario is ordered to clean up Aldofino using a device called the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dousing Device, also known as Flood, while saving Princess Peach from Shadow Mario. Here are some of the complaints I have on this port. I know it's sort of a small one, but I don't really like how they didn't say the correct buttons during the instructional scene. I know it's because it's a game from older hardware, but couldn't they have just hired a new actor for saying those buttons alone? Or just try to edit Flood's voice to put together something to sound like the letter Z or the ZR button? It's not like that would have been too hard to do. Use the button shoot water from my pool. If you press the button, you can stop and shoot. You can then use the stick to press the X button to switch to the hover nozzle. You can then press the button to a body of water and press the button. Anyways, I'm gonna start talking about the controls. The controls are okay i mean yeah i guess that's the only way they could have made the game playable with clicky shoulder buttons on the switch but it's just not the same as the gamecube controller analog buttons with just putting more force on the shoulder button to put more water pressure or less water pressure yes i know i said i've never played the game in its entirety but i still have a gamecube controller and a wii to play it on at least they went out of their way to make the game playable in 16 by 9 aspect ratio unlike <clears throat> super mario 64 Overall, this port is alright, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's good enough, and it plays the game at the best it can on a Nintendo Switch. For me, it's a 6 out of 10. Alrighty, let's go over to Super Mario Galaxy. I've been dying for a port or remake of this game of some sort on the Switch. Mostly because, one, I don't like the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Two, those controllers need batteries and three the resolution is stuck in 480p once we start up the save file we're greeted to the opening cutscene the star festival is held every hundred years to watch a comet in the mushroom kingdom princess peach discovers a star-shaped creature called luma and invites mario to come to the festival to see the luma she discovered just as mario gets there bowser invades the mushroom kingdom in a fleet of airships he invites peach to his creation of his galaxy and removes peach's castle from its foundations using a giant flying saucer and lifts it into outer space. Kamek, one of Bowser's minions, launches Mario, who tried to rescue Princess Peach, into space and onto a small planet with his magic, while the Luma escapes from Princess Peach's hands. On the planet, he meets Rosalina and her star-shaped companions, the Lumas. Rosalina is a watcher of the stars who uses the Comet Observatory to travel across the universe. However, Bowser has stolen all of the power stars that act as the observatory's power source, rendering it immobile. Bestowed with the power to travel through space through one of the Lumas, Mario sets on a journey across the universe to reclaim the power stars and restore power to Rosalina's observatory. Along the way, he finds his friends from the Mushroom Kingdom such as Luigi and the Toads. If you're familiar with the game on the Wii, there really isn't much of a difference playing it on tabletop or dock mode as the controls are pretty much the exact same as the Wii Remote, even having the little shake motion feature to attack. You're even able to press the X button to attack which is much better than shaking your wrist to attack. And you don't even have to point at the screen to play it thanks to the Joy-Con's Bluetooth function. If it ever gets misaligned, just press the R button. Some people may not like it, but playing the game in handheld mode honestly isn't really that bad. You have to play the game in some sort of weird position to play it, 
but some people may have crans playing it like this, but I haven't had any trouble so far. Because you're in handheld mode, you have to tap the screen to collect and shoot star bits and such. And playing it in the position I am right now makes it much easier. I wouldn't recommend playing this game in dock mode with the controller, as you would have to have to move the whole controller to collect star bits, and that's a bit of a hassle. And playing the motion control levels like that, or in handheld mode, is very tricky, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. The graphics are really great, and now that it's in HD, you could really notice the small age imperfections from it being on the Wii. It still surprises me how good the game has really aged so far. Other than the controls, the port is nearly perfect and is better enjoyed on the original Switch rather than the Switch Lite. In my opinion, this support is a 9 out of 10. So, would I recommend getting this game? Well, really, it just depends. Do you already have and enjoy the games at home on older hardware and lower resolution? If you really like them and don't like the compromises made to cater to the Nintendo Switch, then I wouldn't really recommend getting it. Or are you like me, who hasn't played most of these games, wants it in HD, and wants the ability to take it on the go and play it in the living room without forking over hundreds of dollars for a console you have to build? Well, yes, I would definitely recommend buying this game before it's too late. This has been an episode of Honest Reviews where I give my honest opinions on video games, movies, music, and products. Written and edited by Internet Ivan in all honesty with my own experiences and opinions on certain topics. Consider subscribing if you're new, turn on post notifications, like, comment, share, and join the Discord server. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all later.